Oh, those experiments. You never know what will happen. Hi guys. Do you like to experiment? Or maybe you would like to start something new? Or you would like to try a hobby and you feel like you need more hours in a day? I definitely feel the same. Today I would like to share a practical exercise which helps me to find time for everything. And I also account here for some unpredictable times. For example, for me, I have a little baby and you never know how the day will go. So let's learn how to use this time turner. I refer to this exercise when I'm trying to find some time for a new hobby or I would like to start a new work on the side and actually just for self-care as well. This is very visual and eye-opening. It takes just a few minutes but it helps to discover hours of my free time. Okay, let's get into it. And the first thing I do is I decide for myself what do I need this time for and most important, why. I truly believe that my intention should be truly mine and for this I usually ask myself the question why do I want to do it and I keep asking why for at least three, four or five times to get to the root cause and understand is it something I really want or is it something that I want for some other reasons than just truly mine and I feel it's very important because when the reason is truly mine I really feel that I'm more motivated and I'm more motivated to find time and I don't procrastinate as much as well. Whenever possible I try to keep my why very close to me and visual like uh, in a way of a mood board or maybe a screensaver on mobile phone or just a reminder note on my computer. As the next step I outline my usual week with as many details as I need are necessary and I started with quite a lot of details at first so that I could understand the exercise better but now I just leave some blocks. I usually like to color code my blocks so that they are visual and you will see what does it mean on a practical level. So in order to start I look back at my previous week and I just outline what happened during last week and usually it's more or less the same but I start with just basics and then I adjust if I feel I need it. I think it's a very good exercise to implement on a yearly basis or maybe even more often it depends on how things change in your life. I just found my previous exercise, I don't have it dated, but based on what I did at that time, it looks like it was around two years ago. So it's been a while, but that's fine because now it's really time when I do need to find some free time and that's when I'm doing it. So I will share my process and the areas I'm looking at to help you get started. The first one is sleep. I usually wake up at around 7 a.m., maybe a little bit earlier if I have a chance, so I do a few things around home in the morning before my daughter wakes up, but usually it is around 7 when we both wake up and start our day. Then we have a morning routine together with my daughter and I actually have a whole video on my minimalistic morning routine which helps me to be creative and energetic throughout the day and do quite a few things during the day as well. Then I have time for some of the self-care and I usually do a few things around home as well. Then I have some time for my creative work while my daughter is asleep and I do it uh, almost every day, well apart from Mondays when we have a swimming class. Then we have our lunch together and we have some family time. So of course during the week my husband is at work and it's uh, two of us spending time together. We go for a walk or going to meet someone. So whenever it's weekend uh, it usually means that we are doing something all together. Next, I put my daughter for her nap and do some things around home. I cook some food usually or doing something else or whenever I have time, I keep working on my, my own projects. Then we have a family time in the evening when we eat dinner and we play some games and maybe watch a movie and start our evening routine for daughter so she's taking bath and so on. Then I put my daughter to sleep or do some cleaning in the kitchen. After my daughter is asleep, I have my creative slot again. It's usually the time when I edit videos because that's the time when I can actually concentrate for more than one hour at a time and be in the flow and edit videos really fast. And later in the evening I have my self-care routine and I do some mild exercise, have some shower and get ready for bed. I usually read before sleeping and then I just go to bed whenever I can. Recently, I also started running, so we alternate days together with my husband. And another big part of my week is my work, right here. Okay, I think I generally outlined my week, and now it's time to ask some questions. Do I see anything 
that pops into my mind straight away is two things for me here. First of all, I think I might be getting not enough sleep because I feel like I'm going to bed too late and wake up too early. And I also realized that I don't have a block named free time when I basically do nothing. I am happy that I have a good amount of time with my creative work, but it's also important to have time when you don't have anything on your agenda. And that's something that I really need to implement in my life. Another thing, I realized I have quite a good amount of time that I dedicate to my creative work. And it's very good because I like editing videos, I like creating videos. However, here I would like to be more efficient. For example, automate as many tasks as I can and maybe create some templates so that I can spare some time for like, doing nothing at all. The next question is, where do I spend more time than necessary? And I think uh, here is the opposite for me because I usually spend uh, less time than necessary on things. But for example, in my previous exercise, I realized that I have quite a lot of time watching YouTube or watching movies. And that was the opportunity for me to reduce that time and implement something else. The next question is, do I spend any time on things that don't bring value to me? And here it's important to remember that, for example, rest has very high value and it's something to still keep and implement in everyone's life. The next question is, are there any areas which I can automate or make more efficient? And it's definitely yes for me here because first of all, I would like to order groceries online and secondly, I would like to try and cook something for multiple days. For example, making a soup or maybe a stew, which we can eat for multiple days. The next one is, are there any activities that I can just stop doing? And for me, I removed all of those activities, but it's still good to find maybe there are some. The next one is, are there any things that I can ask someone else to do? For example, asking a family member to cook a dinner or maybe wash dishes or maybe walk a dog. And this is very important because even though it might seem just a few minutes, but actually it's around half an hour or maybe even an hour. So from time to time, it's a good way to free up some time. And now as I review my exercise, I need to make notes about how can I adjust my week so that I can free up some time. And here it's very important to know that uh, we have to be realistic. And I know that probably I can't free more than half an hour or hour or two hours per week, but it's also fine because we have to start with something we already have and just if we like doing this new thing, if we like to uh, spend more time on the hobby, we can review the week and try to find some more time. But it's important to start with something we already have because it's better to spend one hour per week or even one hour per month on something rather than spending nothing. And here what works very well for me is actually having a plan B. Here I usually ask myself, what if my dedicated this experimental time gets lost? What can I do? What are the things that I can do to bring it back or maybe to move my things to the next this experimental time? And it happens a lot. For example, my daughter doesn't want to sleep and we just continue our day and I lose my creative time spot, but it's, it's not a big deal because I usually have a plan B, so I don't worry about it. I think the key here is really to use this allocated time wisely and that's why I usually have a list of things I would like to do during my experimental time. So whenever I get it, I just start doing what I want to do. Let me know in comments below if you were successful in finding some time for your experiments. And thank you for joining for this video and I will see you in the next one.